Welcome, everybody. This is the second of three lightning talks during the Sakai virtual conference. These are whirlwind 10 minutes, um, and you're out of here, and a lot of interesting topics. So I'm going to just, without further ado, turn it right over to David Bauer at the University of Dayton and Ryan Allen, too, at the same place. Um, take Sakai to the next level with Sugi. So go ahead, David. I'm actually going to defer to Ryan, so he'll he'll be presenting it straight and kind of give a demo. And everything. All right, that's fine. Hopefully you can just do have that. a. Okay, can you see those PowerPoint slides now? We are in good shape. We hear you and see you. Go for it, Ryan. Okay, I'm going to try to be super quick on this, uh, so I apologize, but I will have a way for you to to play with it. The kind of high level background I want to give to everyone is that suki has been around for a while. And again, everything I'm going to say is, is a big credit to Dr. Chuck and others who have worked on that project. But I think the case I would make and why we wanted to give this presentation is that exactly what's written there. Sakai's flexibility and tight integration with Sugi and other LTI tools really does allow us to expand, innovate, and fill gaps quickly and easily. Um, and we think it's a great differentiator in the market. And we've been doing local um, Sakai development for over 10 years at this point. We've built full tools and we've done lots of customizations, but this opens up new opportunities for us. And sometimes I think just seeing those um, could give other people ideas um, or push um, things to the next level. When we've looked at our SUGI usage over the years, it's really been between um, whether it's pedagogy focus, you know, we've been doing learning app store for a while, but we've been doing more and more with marketing and just process and simplification work. And I think the thing that's most interesting about this is that it's embedded all over our Sakai instance now and our users don't know any different. And so we're getting the benefits from kind of the quick and ease of it and our, our users are getting the benefits because it's, it's additions that are happening quickly. There is, this is, this will be in the slides that you can download off the conference site, but if you want to try uh, any of this stuff on our servers, that information will be posted right there. So I just share that um, up front here. So let me go ahead and I'm going to stop sharing for a second. And I'm going to reshare. Okay, are you now seeing our Sakai instance? Yes, we are. Go okay. for it. <laughs> Thank you very much. So again, what I'm going to quickly cover here is the fact that like when you look at our Sakai instance now, all over the page are Sugi tools. And so again, one of our big problems we had for years and years is that people were not making nice looking home pages. So we added a Sugi tool that is standard in every site now that is called Home Page Builder, where users simply just need to essentially fill out forms and upload files and we take care of all of the formatting for that user. This has been kind of improved along the way as we've learned new things, but users can import from past sites. But again, the idea is that you don't need to be an HTML expert to have a nice landing page, potentially allowing us to kind of move away from even the syllabus tool. But things like adding a quick pull tool that can live on the homepage of a site, creating more engagement. It's interesting because when you look at any of these tools on the left-hand side, most of them, you know, these are Sugi tools that are, again, offer very specific and tightly scoped functionality for users that they wouldn't have as part of Core Sakai. And it might be a little bit more of a burden to build them into Core Sakai. So there's all kinds of, again, learning apps that you could build into any lessons page that you're used to seeing that, again, has been something we've pursued for a lot of years, but that really was kind of just the, the start of it for us, which is, you know, again, these learning apps. What we've seen more and more is, you know, we have wider spread usage. So the library basically said, hey, we want you to get certain content in front of all of our users, but we don't want five different tools to do it. So, you know, uh, we built a tool where they can book a library or chat. This is all Sugi kind of guiding all of this experience. So there's a lot that you can do at the individual course level and then if you think about it just at the highest level, when somebody logs in, we've really used this space to for both instructors and students to market or share information about specific activities that we want them to do, like signing up for this program. We've created functionality where users can, you know, 
add a suggestion that gets mailed to us automatically or ask a question. And again, this is Sugi making that happen. The whole university has to go through a university package where there's quizzes and information built in. This is all being done with Sugi. And sometimes I think when you think of Sugi, it's just the individual learning apps and those are powerful. But again, what we've been able to add over the years are just things that make the experience uh, more of a value add. And when users come forward with an idea, it's things that you can add very quickly. So the final thing I'll show and we can talk about anything else is even just a process improvement like course planner. This was such an important thing during the COVID years, COVID summer, when everybody had to figure out how to move online quickly that we created a course planner tool where they could come in here and define a course, pick a term, and then it automatically gives them a spot all of the weeks. It had our built-in holidays so they knew how to adjust. And faculty could get in here and just start adding information. So what, as they planned out their course, and what's, what was kind of nice is that, and again, the Sugi stuff is that I could come in here and I could also say, well, I want David Bauer to also be able to look at this. He's in my department and he's someone who I think might want to kind of edit this for himself. So I can add other users to that. You can make duplicates of it. You can kind of print it out in a way that it would allow you to see everything top to bottom on the page. And again, what's cool about Sugi is these are all things that can happen within a matter of days versus typically Sakai has been a lot uh, longer process. And then you have to worry about it for upgrades and things like that. So being able to plug this in um, as you go uh, and connect it up has been a real uh, game changer for us. And I will pause there. And I think everybody's having their postprandial nap now because <laughs> I'm not seeing a lot of texts in the in the chat. <laughs> But this is impressive. And this is all, everything you showed was essentially built with Sugi. Yeah, again, we started with just an app store and the lessons, and that was kind of where we got started with it. But then there became so many other use cases where we wanted to add functionality. Um, and again, it was things like, I want to have a quick poll. Well, there wasn't a great way to embed polling in a lessons page. And so let's add it there, and then let's figure out a way to bring it back to the overview page so that you know, somebody at a course level could kind of offer those things. So mm -hmm. trying to find new avenues to kind of insert life into the product and help our users uh, see changes in, in functionality um, without having to, again, carry that forward with upgrades and, and getting that back into the community. All those things can be challenges in their own way. And so uh, <laughs> Chuck is giving you the leading question. Where can I find out more about Sugi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So again, on those slides, you have the ability to log in and kind of look at this site and play with it as a student or an instructor. Certainly, uh, some of our apps are out on uh, Chuck's um, instance, Sugi Cloud. Mm -hmm. um, that is certainly, uh, and I know, uh, like I, th I believe some of the LAMP schools are certainly using that right yes, now. Yes, we are. And, and for us, we're trying to kind of share specific tools back. And part of what is interesting to us is what might be things that the community wants that we could help with, um, given what you've seen where we're headed with this, but also, you know, how can, how can others maybe kind of adopt this same model? And again, going back to that NGDLE perspective, I think it does it's such an advantage to Sakai and in some ways um, it's opened up so much for us that I hate to, I, I hate for it to be just people are doing development and then keeping it to themselves. So us contributing more back to Sugi Cloud, others using Sugi Cloud or standing up their own Sugi instance like we have. Um, again, it's, it's the best part about this is it's PHP. We've had student developers develop our tools right. versus they couldn't do it in, in Sakai quite as easily. Right, excellent, all right. Well, because it's a lightning talk, I have to move on, but I'm uh, fascinated and, and want to know more.